What's up guys, I'm Mike from Stocked Up and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have a lot of plays to go over in this episode. The S&P 500, Dow and the NASDAQ all soared past all time highs. Netflix just kind of exploded up about 16%, almost 17% today. In this video, we're gonna go over all of the plays that we're watching for tomorrow. And at the end of the video, we have a $30 million option to go over. So make sure you guys stick around for that. And if you aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Tom and I post brand new videos every single day. But with that being said, Tom, what happened in the market today? Yeah, Biden's inauguration was really what sent the markets up today to brand new highs. And this actually surprised a lot of traders today. And CNBC reports that Joe Biden's stimulus plan has boosted the stock market already and is expected to fuel more economic growth higher interest rates, and more stock market gains. And it was just awesome to see the QQQ and the S&P 500 fly up to new highs today, as well as the Dow. But really, the QQQ killed it while Netflix popped up as well, about 16%. And they even flew once the market opened after their uh, after their fantastic outlook and earnings yesterday, which was just awesome to see. But Biden's policies could accelerate the rotation to cyclical stocks that has already been underway. And the new president's plans, though, are not without risk including inflation and interest rates that start to bite into stock market gains. Also, taxes could play into things as we start to see his legislation start to come out. And he actually um, went ahead and introduced some, uh, some what are these called, executive orders. And he said that, um, that they're going to be rejoining the Paris Climate Accord, which is going to be his first move to tackle global warming. And I know that could be a pretty big hit to stocks and also oil um, with that Paris Climate Accord. This could actually make the price of oil go pretty far up as they start to transition out of oil and they start to tax things that have carbon outputs and obviously oil outputs carbon of course so yeah looking at crude oil futures they were kind of flat the past couple of days even if we look at like exxon mobile it was up about one and a half percent today if we look at chevron up about one percent so yeah oil is doing decent right now um i think we'll see more movement out of it you know like just uh after we get like an update on like his policies and things like that but um that's very interesting but um since today is inauguration day i figured we might as well talk about some stocks related to biden and um what his policies will probably favor so um you know obviously electric vehicles would be um they're already just exploding you know in the past year but um i would expect these uh just this sector and industry to continue to expand um even the marijuana industry so like um, for the EVs, we're looking at Tesla and Neo, and basically any other uh, company that has actual value behind it in the EV sector. For marijuana stocks, we're looking at CGC, ACB, things like that. Um, and then uh, with the, uh, what do you call it, like the manufacturing and uh, all that stuff, we have Caterpillar, which is actually doing pretty well over the past year already, but I would expect this stock to continue upwards. Um, this stock is just uh, no, I wouldn't say exploding, but it's been slow and steady. It's one of those blue chip stocks that's kind of known for being slow and steady. There's a lot of value behind it. And then, you know, again, with, uh, you know, it's kind of related to uh, the EVs, but, you know, solar. So FSLR is also a good stock to look at. And then we have an ETF called TAN, T-A-N. And this is basically a solar ETF, which has just been exploding for the past year. Went from about 21 to over 120 in a year so um these are some stocks that tom and i put together it's just a couple of them that we like under um biden's um administration obviously there are a lot more plays to look at but that's just a a quick little list from the top of our heads tom like do you have any like favorites out of this or like uh what are you seeing yeah, my favorite sector is actually going to be the marijuana sector because Democrats have said that they were they're actually they actually want to legalize marijuana uh, federally in the United States, which means that it'll override the state's laws, and then that means that um it'll be pretty much decriminalized, and that that could be really big for a lot of these marijuana stocks like ACB, CGC. TLRY is another big one. I believe they uh, they were invested with AB InBev, which is Anheuser Busch, which makes the, the alcohol. So um, they have a lot of connections. So there's a lot of these stocks that are really low right now that have a lot of potential to keep running back to the upside. For sure, and like my favorite one in the marijuana industry right now, personally, is CGC. Uh, I really like the the way they're positioned on the chart right now. I remember a couple years back, like I want to say in like 2015. 
basically any stock that had anything to do with marijuana was just exploding. Like, you know, even CGC got overhyped. Basically any marijuana stock got overhyped. So uh, CGC went from about $1 to 60 back in, what was that, 2017? Yeah, about 2017, actually. 2016, 2017. And then they all kind of pulled back. And, you know, it's basically the same story with ACB and basically any other marijuana stock, like even Tilray. I think Tilray was one of the one of the biggest pops one from what was that? I think about it would think it was like about 25 all the way up to 300 in a couple weeks. So uh, overall, my favorite is CGC. I think it's pretty good for the long term. Of course, it is risky, you know, just investing in one specific stock. But uh, I, I like it for the long term. Yeah, and I think one of the more riskier ones would actually be ACB because they actually had a reverse split in the past because they were having a lot of problems staying profitable during that downturn that they all had. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we will see how this plays out, but let's get right into our member of the day. Today's member of the day is Mick Kraken. So uh, thank you so much, Mick, for all your positivity in the Discord chat. Tom and I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for everything you do. But let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. The first one we're looking at is Google to the upside. So G-O-O-G-L. Yeah, Google's actually doing pretty well. Make them pop above $1,900 and then maybe target $1,920 or $1,940. Sounds good. They broke all-time highs today. With the next one, we have Apple. Yeah, Apple is a really good play today as well. Make them pop above 132.50, which was the high. And this and Microsoft pretty much were identical today. Sounds good. And then we have Netflix. NFLX. Yeah, this one, you just straight killing it. Make them pop above 593. And then the last one, we have Microsoft. MSFT. This was actually an awesome play that we had today, but make them pop above 226. Yeah, for sure. So Microsoft was actually the swing trade from yesterday. So uh, we ended up buying in Microsoft yesterday towards close, and it actually just exploded today. So Microsoft was definitely a great play, a great swing that we had. Um, if you guys want to trade the same options as Tom and I every single day, you can click the stocked up options alerts link. In the description down below, we're doing a quick little sale right now. So for more information, you can click the first link in the description down below. But Tom, I think it's time for the $30 million options trade for tomorrow. We are looking at the Netflix 600 strike call options that expire this Friday, January 22nd. So Netflix popped. Uh, we're only about $7 away from um, this option. I can definitely see this play continuing. Uh, they have a ton of momentum. Um, what are you thinking? Yeah, it might not break 600, but I could definitely see it at least testing it. And I think that it has a lot of potential to maybe break it. And I just, I really like the play with Netflix. They have a lot of potential for the long term. And I think that Disney could be another piggyback off of Netflix. So if we see um, Netflix do well, Disney should do pretty well um, also. But I really do like this play for tomorrow. And I would really think that they were longing this. You know, sometimes people would think that they shorted it. But man, with this momentum, it'd be really hard to short that today. Yeah, for sure. It's exploding and Netflix is one of those stocks that is known to be a multi-day runner. So uh, we'll have to see how this plays out, but let's get right into the questions from the previous episode. With the first question we have, uh, we have Oscar saying uh, SPCE is looking to break out and how it might test $35. So uh, what do you see in there, Tom? I know that's your stock. Yeah, it's my favorite stock. Make them pop above $34. I really like that to the upside. And just like he said, I think that there's a lot of potential here. And you can see how it's really hit above that $34 to $35 in the past and then fallen back down. So just be really careful around these levels because you'd want to see a pretty significant pop. And if you see um, the safest way to would be to make it pop above 36 and I think if you saw that it might run up to 40 but just make it pop above that because it looks like we could see a possible pullback here over the next couple of weeks and it just depends like what goes on with SPCE because they have a lot of test flights and stuff like that that come out so just keep in mind that like something could go wrong at any time and it's just one of those stocks that you really have to pay attention to if you do buy it. Gotcha. With the next question, we have Ubi saying, I have 100% of my portfolio in BB calls. Um, I won't sell those options until you answer this question in your next video. Should I sell BB tomorrow? <laughs> I really hope it didn't die today, which is Wednesday. So um, always trust your own gut is the first thing. But um, looking at BB, I mean, 
I, I can definitely see this stock falling over the next couple of days. Um, it has a lot of momentum, but I think we're getting close to the top. Obviously, on stocks like this, when you when you have a stock like this and when it's running, nobody knows the top. Um, just looking off of it, like on a risk perspective and just like technical analysis and just um, how these stocks work, it looks like it will pull back pretty soon. Um, I would doubt if I were in your position. I would sell the calls. You should be at a profit. Um, what do you think, Tom? Yeah, I think that he should sell them too. Um, tomorrow's going to be a pretty big deal, though, I think, for it. If you start to see it fall below like $12, I think you're, you're going to see it really start to pull back. So you maybe could hold till then, but um, it just depends on what type of risk lo level you have and what, what price you got in at. For sure. So with the next question, we have Tony saying, your videos are always on point. Let's go stocked up. What's your thoughts on RMO for the short term and the long term? So uh, Tom and I have not researched this company fundamentally, so uh, we can give you a short term analysis. Um, overall, I see it really channeling between uh, the $20 and $24 level. Um, besides it, I would just wait until it hits one of those levels. Um, if it's like showing, um, what do you call it? If it's bouncing off that $20 level, it can be a great dip buy. But overall, I'm not a huge fan of this chart. Tom, do you see anything? Um, no, I, I just, I, I'm not a big fan of the chart either. I think it could be a good dip buy, like you said, but it just really like looks like it's starting to crash back down. I'm not sure what they do and I don't know what their fundamentals are, but it just really looks like a very volatile stock. And no matter what you do with this, it's going to be very, very risky. For sure. And then we have Bravo asking about TSN. What do you see in there? Yeah, now this is actually a stock that looks like it's starting to pop back up. And I think that this could be a great value stock to pick up right now for the long term. And Tyson should do pretty good in the long term. You know, they do like a lot of chicken and stuff like that. You can like heat up in your ovens and they <laughs> supply a lot of chicken to everyone. So I just think that they could do pretty well in the long term. <laughs> yeah. All right. With the next question, we have Cake saying, can you please cover Alphabet and Amazon, please? So absolutely. So um, I really like both of these stocks for the long term. Obviously, they're massive companies. Um, they provide a lot of value. I like them both for the long term. Amazon, I can definitely see shooting up over the next couple of weeks as of how it stands right now. If we take a look at Google, they're also soaring. Um, I wouldn't swing Google right now, but I would definitely day trade it as it is at all time highs right now. Um, Amazon, I would consider swinging for the next couple weeks. What do you think? Yeah, I really like the play on Amazon with the long term wedge. It's actually moved between it very well and it's starting to bounce off the lower range. And I think if a lot of these stocks start to go up, Amazon could do very well. And they also said today that, that they were going to start to do uh, vaccine centers for Biden. So they pretty much said that they'll use some of their distribution centers as vaccine uh, vaccine sites so that people can get their vaccines at, you know, at a higher rate than they could have before. And that's going to be a big help with the vaccine rollout and also getting, uh, I think, getting things back on the right track. And I think that that's part of the reason why Amazon popped 5% today. But I think that if the overall market goes up, Amazon will go up. Gotcha. And then we have Andrew saying ETHE. What do you think of this one? Yeah, I've actually never heard of this one, but um, it looks like it follows Ethereum. And I really like this. Um, It looks like that it could start to pop back up. But just keep in mind that if these cryptos start to pull back, that this stock could really start to pull back down. It looks like a very volatile stock. All right. And then we have Mr. Turtle asking about UAVS. So Tom, I know that we were talking about this a little bit earlier today. Uh, what are you thinking about this one? Yeah, I mean, this one's doing very well. They actually have a thing with Amazon where they're gonna be some, using their drones as like delivery drones and different things like that. And I think that there's a lot of possibilities with this stock. I will say though, it is up quite a bit. It's up to $14 and it was just, you know, it was 42 cents earlier this year. So just keep that in, or back in 2020, I should say, but just keep, just keep in mind, it's gonna be a very volatile stock. I really like the movement over the past few days, but I think that going into the next couple of weeks, we might start start to see a pullback. And if that does happen, it might be a good time to grab some shares on this. All right. And then we have a good question from Carlos saying, Hey guys, question on the overall market. People are saying we are due for a correction on the market since we are flying high. But the thing is, FANG stocks are not at all, uh, not at all time highs. Most are in correction territory. In fact, uh, what's your take on this given the weight of these stocks on the market? So 
Great question. And I just wanted to explain something real quick because I feel like um, a lot of people don't understand this is, you know, no matter what, if the market's at all time highs, if the market is tanking, no matter what happens, you're always going to have analysts and people online and on TV saying the market's going to crash. You know, the market's going to fall 40% next month. The market's going to crash in the next year. Like there's always going to be people saying, hey, the market's going to crack. Now, um, personally, um, I don't think the market is going to crash anytime soon unless there's a major catalyst like we saw in February and March. Can the market pull back? Absolutely. And that, that's completely normal. You know, like we saw um, like Apple and Facebook and even Microsoft really pull back over the past couple months. They've just been soaring basically since March and and basically they've just been flatlining for the past month or two. So that's just normal, right? I don't think the market is going to crash unless we have a big catalyst. I can definitely see it pulling back, but um, there's always going to be always going to be people online, you know, kind of hyping up the market crashing and, and things like that. So unless we have a crazy catalyst that fundamentally changes the market or the economy or something like that, the market probably won't crash. And you know, especially seeing what the market did today, we soared past all-time highs. Um, the tech is starting to come back a little bit. Like if we look at these charts on Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, especially like it shows a lot of upside potential for me. So unless we have a catalyst come out um, that can change that, I would be pretty bullish on the market. Um, obviously, I don't you know, I'm not a huge fan of buying the market um, when we're at all time highs. But, you know, some of these tech stocks like Apple and Microsoft and like I said, Amazon, especially they have a decent amount of room to make up like the QQQ is at all time highs. But Amazon, you know, they're I don't know, they're about what is that about two to three hundred dollars off their all time highs. So um, I can see them coming back up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Tom? Yeah, I mean, they're about 8% off their highs, and that's very interesting. Like you said, the QQQ is at all-time highs, but a lot of these tech stocks actually aren't, which is interesting to see. I mean, obviously, Netflix is part of the reason, I think, why QQQ hit all-time highs, but it's just awesome to see these stocks doing this, and a lot of people thought it was going to go down. So just keep in mind that these stocks are generally, um, these tech stocks generally do well when we have a Democratic president in there or a Democrat president. So just keep that in mind going forward that like under Obama, the market actually didn't do that bad. So just keep that in mind that hopefully going forward, we can see new highs and we can just see continued growth out of these tech stocks and out of the overall market because the tech stocks are really what's been driving the market. For sure. So Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market for tomorrow? Uh, really, I'm just going to be watching all the big tech stocks again. It looks like Netflix, Apple, um, Microsoft, all those stocks look very good to the upside. I really like it. Um, like you said, it looks, looks it just really is starting to look like Apple might start to retest their high around 138 maybe, which would be an awesome move tomorrow or over the next few days. And that's really what I'm going to be looking for is for these FANG stocks to really start to move up. And I think that that'll be the overall factor with the market. Like I said, if, if these stocks go up, then the overall market will go up. Sounds good. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, if you guys want to trade with Tom and I every single day and access our bots, you can click the stocked up options alerts link in the description down below to trade with us. We do have a coupon running. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. And if you aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day. But with that being said, thanks for watching.